Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to John's Workshop and this video is going to be workshop tips number 14 and I realise this is coming hot on the heels of workshop tips number 13 but that was so popular and lots and lots of requests for more of this kind of stuff so this video is titled workshop tips number 14 and we're going to dig into more on the DRO and we're going to look specifically at the PCD function on a DRO. So, um, as I've said, popular, lots of lots of requests. Almost every comment was more of this, please. So I thought, well, you know, we'll litter a few of these in over the next few months and try and group them all together in a playlist so that people can run through them, easy to find, easy to index. So that's the that was my thinking. So um, PCD is pitch circle diameter, as most of you will already know. Uh, we're going to do a bit of theory. Uh, most of you who know me by now know you don't get away with this scot-free. We're not just going to go, here's a DRO, here's the PCD function, press this, do that, press that and just confuse everybody. We're going to try and dig into a little bit of theory that just helps make PCD function on a DRO, on a milling machine, more understandable, more easy to use. So I'm going to try and, again, use high-level language, very, very basic theory to try and help break down what we're talking about here in terms of rules, conventions, that kind of thing. So we'll follow that on, we'll go to the milling machine a bit like we did before with the absolute and incremental, we'll set some scenarios up and we'll switch between inputting numbers onto the DRO, moving the axis around, that kind of thing, and just do some practical demonstrations of using the PCD function on the DRO. And then we'll come back to the board and we'll do a final wrap up and thoughts and anything that I've forgotten to say during the rest of the video. And we've got a little schematic of uh, a PCD. So if you come here for my good looks, wit, humour and, and you've got no idea what I'm talking about, well, it might all be explained later in the video. Let's move on, shall we? OK, back to school. So, pitch circle diameter. The rules. So rule number one, a Sharpie pen is roughly 11.5 millimetres or 0.453 inches in diameter. We'll come back to that later. Just hold on to that nugget of information. Rule number two, we're going to talk about convention. So during my career I've worked lots of machines with different DROs on from Heidenhain to various different makes of DRO capability and also lots of CNC machine tools as well, all different, all different controllers, different machines, different software and largely I'm going to say the majority, sort of 90 plus percent of all of those machines function in exactly the same way and this is really important to understand. So when you're talking about a pitch circle diameter of holes, be it on a CNC machine, be it on a DRO, on a manual machine, this position here, the three o'clock position, equals zero degrees. And that's really important to understand. So three o'clock equals zero degrees. And that's the same on a CNC miller machine, it's the same on a DRO, it's the same of all software, it's the same in a CAD system. When you're drawing things in CAD, it's a convention that's universally been adopted, thankfully, and it doesn't matter where you go, what you use, that's a consistent rule normally. There will be some exceptions, I've come across one or two very strange exceptions in the past of weird and wonderful machine tools that have been made in countries you now for specific applications that don't tend to follow conventions but largely in the main that is the convention. That's the first convention. The second convention is a counterclockwise direction equals positive. No room. Positive. Okay. So when you're dealing with angles so when you're moving any angular position around your pitch circle of holes, again on any CAD system, on any CNC machine tool, on any DRO, or in the main any DRO, there will be exceptions, a 
counterclockwise movement is positive. So if you say go to 45 degrees plus positive 45 degrees, you're going to finish up in this position here because zero is your three o'clock position plus 45 gets you to there, plus 90 gets you to here. If you say go to minus 45 degrees, you're all ahead of me, you're going to go to this position here. If you said go to minus 90 degrees, you're going to end up in this position here. That is a convention and it's really worthwhile understanding that. If you don't understand that, when you're trying to fathom out a PCD function on a DRO, you'll quickly get lost. So it's really important to know these two rules. That 3 o'clock is your zero, counterclockwise movement equals positive angle. Okay, so just imagine those, keep hold of those two rules. I'm going to clear this now. There's a couple more bits I just want to touch on, nothing too heavy. And then we'll move over to the milling machine and we'll start doing some practical examples. Okay, we're moving on now. This isn't really rules, so I'm calling this context. So when you're programming your DRO unit, a bit like when we spoke about absolute and incremental, the, the, you know, the book will tell you how to use the function. What it won't tell you is how your drawing or your design definition or your fag packet sketch or whatever you're working from has been dimensioned up. So it's important to understand, again, as with absolute and incremental, everything starts with the drawing, the sketch, whatever it is you're working from. You've got to start there before you start pumping numbers into your DRO because otherwise you're going to end up making mistakes. So look at your drawing, look at your sketch, look at your plans, whatever it is you're working from and study them before you start putting numbers in. So that's a really important rule. Then you're going to get asked or presented with uh, a number of selections and we'll go through this on the DRO in a minute. Largely it's going to ask you what plane initially that you're working on. So you're working on the XY plane which 99.9% .9 of you will be doing for nearly everything that you're doing on a manual machine in a home workshop. You could be working on a um, on an XZ plane or on a YZ plane. So if you think about your three axes and how they interact with each other, they will give you those three planes. Now, I'm not sure I've ever used, certainly on a manual machine with a DRO, I don't think I've ever used the XZ plane or the, uh, the YZ plane. Everything's been XY. So we'll ignore the other two just for this particular video. It's then going to ask you where the centre position of your pitch circle or holes is with reference to wherever the datums are that you've got set on your part and it's this point it's probably worth going back and looking at the last workshop tips video number 13 if that's not making any sense because that will help you understand how you might have various different datums already set in the DRO so you need to be putting numbers in with reference to your drawing, your design definition, your sketch in terms of where the datum on the part is and where your pitch circle of holes needs to sit with reference to those datums. So that's what this is asking you for here. What's the center position? And it won't always be zero, zero. It could be an oddball random number in X and in Y if you're working in the XY plane. It's then going to ask you what your pitch circle diameter is. And that's simply the circle that inscribes all of the holes on that particular pitch circle diameter. And it will be the diameter of that circle. That's the value that you enter in there. It's then going to ask you what your start angle is and what your end angle is. We'll cover that in the demonstration in a bit more detail. Again, really important. Study your drawing. Really important here to remember the rules we've just been through about zero degrees being the three o'clock position and a positive angle being counterclockwise. That's where this really comes to be important. And then finally, it's going to ask you what your number of holes on the pitch circle pattern Oh, so is it three holes, five, seven, whatever the number is, that's where you pump that in. And again, really interesting. I've watched a few people with DROs on YouTube struggling with actually entering the right number of holes into the DRO. So if there's six holes on the pattern, I've seen people actually entering seven holes in because otherwise it goes wrong and doesn't put the holes in the right place. That's because this start angle and end angle have been entered incorrectly and also not probably unaware of zero being that three o'clock position and positive being counterclockwise. So these are the basic rules that allow you to 
put in the actual numbers straight off your drawing, straight off your design. Now a bit of a disclaimer, this is my DRO, I've taken the exact sequence out of my DRO so you'll see that in a minute. Yours might be different but the questions will largely be the same. To, to, to produce a pattern of holes on a pitch circle you need to understand all these variables so it will be presenting you with questions very similar to this, maybe not in this order, maybe with a slightly different description. So, But we'll cover that when we get onto the machine. Okay, the final thing worth talking about here is oddball holes. So what do I mean by oddball holes? Well, hopefully the diagram's given it away. So again, PCD function is very, very useful when you've got regularly spaced holes on a pitch circle. That's how it's geared up to do its maths. It's not particularly well geared up for when you've got a mixture of regularly spaced holes and irregularly spaced holes. So ignore the green one just for now. Let's look at the red holes. So we've got there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hang on. Start at, let's start at zero after I've just preached it, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight holes equally spaced at 45 degrees as a pattern. They're the red ones. And then we've got two holes in blue here that are not equally spaced with the red holes. They're on the same pitch circle diameter, but they're not equally spaced. So how do you account for that when you're doing a PCD? So I'm going to tell you how I do it and how I would recommend you do it. This is quite common, very common in aerospace, very common in lots of different industries where you've got a bolt hole pattern of bolts that say hold a flange down and you've got a couple of locating dowels somewhere on that same pattern. Very, very common. You may come across this. How should you attack it? Very simple. You do two PCDs of holes using your PCD function. So <clears throat> you do your first PCD with your eight holes, get them drilled, tapped, whatever you're doing. Then you kill that off and then you create a second PCD of holes that have got two holes on the same pitch circle with this as a start angle and with this as an end angle and then you'll put your second two holes in. So you just use the function twice to cope with the oddball holes. And the green one here, less common but again I've seen it where you'll just get one hole on the same pitch circle, rand seemingly randomly spaced and it could be for, you know in aerospace it could be for instrumentation hole or whatever it is. There'll be something, that lots of occasions like that. Again same rules apply. Do your regularly spaced ones as one PCD of holes, get them finished, done with that, set up a second pitch circle of holes and put your one odd ball hole in using a pitch circle. And can you just put one hole on a pitch circle using the PCD function? Yes you can, it's very easy. Basically when you're answering your question set, your start angle and end angle will be the exact same number and you will have one hole and everything else you input exactly the same. Nice and easy, dead simple. So hopefully that overview of the theory has been hopefully something new for some people, you've learnt something, hopefully it's been simple enough for you to understand but we're now going to move over to the milling machine and put a little bit of this theory into a bit of practice by showing you how to enter the values in the DRO and a bit of movement on the axis of the machine that complements that. Okay, we're over at the mill. Got my good old cardboard templates as parts again. So just before we start, just to cover something off that I said on the rules, just now on the board, here's a Sharpie, here's a 12 to 13 collet, or a, sorry, 11 to 12 collet. That fits in there lovely. That goes in the spindle lovely, and this isn't just about using the PCD function on a DRO, this is about using any function on a DRO. It costs absolutely nothing to do that. Stick it in your spindle and traverse round on top of your part, on a piece of cardboard, on a piece of scrap, whatever it is, to either just before you do your job or even just to trial something out ahead of doing your job on a bit of cardboard, a bit of paper, doesn't matter what. Dead simple trick, dead easy to do. I've used it many times even though I've used DROs lots over the years, they're all slightly different, this one's slightly different, it's just a, a fail safe to save you making any 
silly mistakes and that's probably the best tip in this whole video okay so having said all of that I've just put my sharpie in a chuck in a keyless chuck for what I'm doing here that's going to be fine I would always recommend sticking it in a collet chuck because the sharpie is quite long you're never really sure how it's going to be in a keyless chuck but for what we're doing for this demonstration it will be absolutely fine so let's look at a PCD of holes I've marked them out using the sharpie as I've just explained and this is one of the ones that I think I showed on the board or very similar where we've got eight holes equally spaced at 45 degrees on a 50 millimeter pitch circle diameter so that's the that's some of the information we need what you'll see is they're all offset by 15 degrees so if you look at the first hole this is how it may appear on the drawing where it shows one hole with reference to the center line at 15 degrees and because you know they're equally spaced that gives you everything you need to put these holes in what it does mean is as I said on the board and I've written it again on here 3 o'clock position is your zero and counterclockwise equals positive in terms of your angle as you go round so the very first hole that my DRO will go to if I pump this data in is this one now let's say I'd got one hole on a PCD which is very unusual it would be described like that but let's assume we've got one hole to put in not eight and it's at 359 degrees from this zero point the first hole going clockwise going sorry going counterclockwise going positive all the way round that the DRO is going to get to is the hole at 359 degrees so hopefully that's helping you understand about the start angles and end angles and talking end angles so we know our first hole our start angle is going to be 15 degrees because we've got it on our drawing we need to know what our end angle is going to be so there's a bit of maths involved in doing this properly for an equally spaced pattern like this you don't need a calculator it's all mental arithmetic we know that each one of these holes is at 45 degrees spacing you can do it one of two ways you can either go counterclockwise and say well we know that's 90 degrees we know that's 180 we know this is 270 plus 15 is 285 plus 45 gets us to 330 degrees so our end angle would be 330 or you could come back the other way and say again you know the spacing between our first hole and our last hole is 45 degrees we know 15 degrees of that because it says so on the drawing so 45 minus 15 equals 30 and if you take 30 degrees away from 360 you will end up with 330 so you can go either way around to get to your end angle effectively mental arithmetic dead easy with an equally spaced pattern of holes that's not always the case sometimes you may need to get the calculator out to find out where this end hole is typically if you've got 37 holes or something and with a skewed offset to start with it's not always dead simple to work it out in your head so calculator is the easy way of doing it so our start angle will be 15 degrees our end angle will be 330 degrees so we're going to move to the DRO now you've seen the pattern I'm going to key in the numbers that get us to putting this pattern in okay so we're at our DRO and there's a few things that are really important with these with especially with these simpo chinese import DROs they're not they're slow they work slightly differently to more expensive DROs so something that's really important with this and we'll cover it as we go through is where your spindle is with reference to your hole center or your PCD center point and I'll, I'll cover that in a moment so we'll come back to that but what's also important is you make sure you're in absolute for a start not in incremental we can do it in incremental but I would always recommend making sure you're in absolute so we're going to key the numbers in that we need for that PCD of holes that we've just seen on the part in the vise so we're going to press our PCD circle function whole circle pattern function here and it's now asking me to choose what plane I want as we said on the board so it's currently set to 
the XZ plane, I've done that deliberately. Then we've got the YZ plane, or we've got the XY plane. Now that's the one that we want, so I'm just using the up and down arrow keys. Might be different on your DRO, but you need to find out how to get through till you get to the XY plane. I'm now going to press enter. Now this is the important bit, it's asking me where my centre position of the circle pattern is. So, 9 times out of 10 you'll be working on 0, 0, X0 and Y0. What's really important with these import DROs is that your spindle is actually wound to that 0, 0 position. If it's not, you'll get yourselves in all types of bother. So you need to wind your spindle to the centre of your whole pattern and then make sure that you've got zero zero set on your DRO. It's now asking me for the diameter of my PCD, my, so my pitch circle diameter. So we said it was 50 millimeters, so we'll enter 50 into there. It's now asking me what my start angle needs to be. I don't have to key it in, it's already set to 15 degrees as it was marked on the cardboard. So we'll now move to our end angle and as we just calculated we know this needs to read 330 degrees so we'll put that in 330 and it's now asking me how many holes are in the pattern obviously there were eight holes equally spaced so we're going to put eight in there and it's now saying traverse to hole number one and it's showing me how far I need to move in the x-axis and the y-axis to get me over my first hole position. So we'll move back to the mill now. Okay, so as I've just said, my spindle is right over my zero, 0 position of this particular pattern of holes. I'm now going to move to that hole number one position, so I need to move to plus 24 something in X, and you're basically winding down until your DRO reads zero. And I'm now going to move the y-axis plus 6.4 millimeters. I'll show you that on the DRO. Okay, so you can see we've moved to our x0 position. We're now going to move our y, and we're just going to basically wind the axis until we read zero on the y, and we're then zero zero on our whole one position, like that. And as you can see there we're bang over our hole one position. So once we've drilled, reamed, drilled and tapped, whatever it is in that position, we're just going to then use a down arrow on the DRO. So I'm saying use the down arrow, it might be slightly different on your DRO, but certainly for mine, that's how we move from hole number one to hole number two. And you'll see that change. And now again, I've just got my deltas in both X and Y and I need to wind both of those until they both read 0, 0 and then I machine my second hole and once I've done that I then machine my third hole and you can see these are adding up and changing because I've not moved my axis in between so they're still relative so what I'm going to do now is move all the way to hole number 8 because this is the one that people I've seen struggle with in they'll program nine holes in the pattern rather than eight holes because the end position hasn't been set up correctly. So I've now moved to hole number eight in the pattern and this is my two deltas. So I'm just going to move those while you're still focused in on the DRO. So we'll move this delta to zero on Y axis. Near enough. And then we'll move the X axis till we read zero near enough and I'll just spin you back round and there we are sitting right over our final hole in the pattern so I've just pumped in the numbers into the DRO exactly as they would have been written on a drawing so 15 degrees to our first hole 330 degrees being our end angle 8 being the number of holes in the pattern and 50 millimeters being the PCD which I don't need to show you this because you know it'll be right, but that is between holes there across the diameter, that is 50 millimeters. So that is all working correctly. So again, 
the vital important bits that you need to understand is everything starts at this zero line counterclockwise equals positive and your end angle needs to represent wherever this last hole is with respect to your 360 degrees starting at this zero point going in a counterclockwise direction if you get those basic rules in your mind you can put any number of holes in uh, odd numbers even numbers on a whole circle pattern using the method I've just shown you it's very simple okay just for you I've done a bit of research well playing around not research and what I've just spoken about so let's assume this is a rectangular component and this bottom corner here is my zero zero corner but my PCD of holes is over here where we've got it drawn so I've touched on the side I've touched on the front and I've gone zero zero on my DRO in this position right here on the corner because I've got other features that I need to put in with respect to this date and corner there could be holes around the outside there could be pockets slots who, who knows and in the middle of my part or somewhere on my part I've got this whole circle pattern and what I've done here is very this is very crude I've just measured with a rule 72 millimeters from the end of the cardboard to the center line in X and 55 millimeters up in Y so 72 in X 55 in Y I'll just spin you back around to the DRO okay we're back at the DRO we're still in absolute we've gone X0 Y0 on that bottom left hand corner as you've just seen I'm now going to program in my PCD of holes even though my spindle is still over that bottom left hand corner this time I won't have to punch any numbers in because this will hold on to what we've got in already for the pattern so plane is X Y axis happy with that and because I've already been playing the numbers are already in the DRO it's remembered them so I'm saying my centre position is 72 millimeters positive in X and 55 millimeters positive in Y so I've punched those two numbers in and basically you use this X and this Y on my DRO to do this not this one and this one you have to use these programming X and Y not the zeroing X and Y be different with different DROs but this is how I've done it on mine so I'm happy with those numbers so 50 mil is my PCD as it was before start angle of 15 degrees as before end angle of 330 as before and eight holes equally spaced as before so it's now going to calculate and it's now saying move to hole number one and you'll see now the numbers are much bigger I'll just traverse to that hole position so I'm moving away from my zero zero corner now near enough near enough and no surprises we're right over our first hole position and from there on exactly the same as I've just shown you in the last demonstration to go round all of the holes in the PCD so there's not really a lot more to show you with this PCD function than what I've already shown you you know it's just a case of changing the pitch circle diameter changing the number of holes changing the start angle changing the end angle apart from that and changing the date and point where you want to start you're either starting from the zero zero of the whole pattern or you're starting from the zero zero of the part and actually punching the numbers in like we've just demonstrated there's not really a lot more to it than that that's that's about it the only thing that I will say is as I said earlier about needing the spindle to be over the zero zero position of the pattern when we selected that as our part zero the same is true with my DRO anyway I needed to have the spindle over this zero zero corner here when I was punching in the 72 and the 55 if I had the spindle sat anywhere else it would have then put the pattern further on so you need to always have your spindle over the datum reference point that you're going to use for that whole pattern be it the part datum or be it the pattern datum 
the spindle needs to be sat over that datum, or certainly with my DRO anyway. I know more expensive DROs don't you don't need to do that. But it's a safety, I would always recommend you do it anyway because you won't do any harm by having your spindle sat over the right point. So yeah, that's really it. As I said on the board, you know, if you've got a pattern like this to do, and then you've got two oddball holes at say 35 degrees and 35 degrees you know whatever 180 degrees around or whatever other angle it might be for a couple of dowel holes or one oddball hole on its own put your eight holes in first or your 10 or whatever your first pattern is and then go back in set another pattern of holes up circle hole pattern with the start angle and end angle of your pattern if it's just got two holes Put your start angle on hole one which will be the first hole that the spindle is going to get to from your three o'clock zero line going in a counterclockwise direction that will always be hole one and the second hole or third hole will always be coming round counterclockwise and whichever your last hole is calculate your end angle add that in and then just put the exact number of holes that are in that hole pattern and you could have even three or even four separate sets of hole patterns around the same centre point quite happily just setting each individual hole pattern up separately so not too difficult I hope that's all been fairly easy to follow as usual if there's questions let me know and I'll do my best to try and answer them so with all that being done and said we'll move back to the board and we'll close this tips video out so there we go, that gets us to the end of this workshop tips video. Hells bells, I booked my ticket to go there a long time ago. <laughs> hope you've all enjoyed that, hope that's been useful, I hope you've found it informative. If there, as I said, if there are questions, just level them in the comments and either me or somebody else who's got equal experience of using these things will answer you, I'm quite sure. Um, it's not difficult. The PCD function is actually probably one of the easiest functions to use on a DRO, if I'm being absolutely honest. There's just those two or three basic rules. If you've got them, once you've got those in your mind, and I know I keep saying it, and I'm not going to apologise for it, because hopefully it will stick, that your three o'clock position is always zero, and a counterclockwise movement away from that is a positive angle, and your start angle and end angle need to be respective of your first hole and your last hole in the pattern and the number of holes that you put in needs to be the exact number of holes that you've got in your pattern and it is that simple everything else will work from that point so as I said hope that's useful um, keep the questions coming in if there are more of these types of DRO tips videos wanted there are other functions on the DRO as I said in my previous video, I've not really used any on this DRO, such as angle, there's, there's quite a few. I'm more than happy to do the background work, homework, figure out how it works on mine, and then do a tips video to show you how it works on this particular DRO. Quite happy to do that. If you're liking the style and the language and the way I break this down and you're finding it helpful and useful, just give us a shout and I'll do my best in a future tips video to go into more detail of some of the other functions. So with all that being said and done, thank you all very much for watching. Thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along. There has been a distinct lack of swarf being made in this workshop for the last few weeks and I am acutely aware of that as I'm sure many of you are and I am going to try and work to address that in the very near future. So hopefully next week we'll be back in and around making some swarf and actually machining something. So. Thank you all very much and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.